Good morning, everybody. I'm already well at it this morning, but I thought I would show you a little bit of the uh, kind of kooky stuff I tend to get into. So, this motor is off from a Vextrax milling machine. I'll explain in a minute why it's set up here in the saw. And it is burned out, got a burned out winding in it. Um, they've burned out two motors on this machine. I don't know exactly in what time frame because I wasn't involved with the first one, but at any rate, the uh, most likely explanation is these import machines, a lot of them have garbage drum switches on them, just trash Chinese made stuff. And they'll burn out a contact in the switch and then single phase the motor and somebody's cutting along doesn't realize they've lost a leg and burn the motor up. And I'm pretty confident that's why this is cooked two of them in a row. Got the switch swapped with the motor last time. So anyways, I have bought a Dayton switch. Um, one of the issues is this is a five horse motor. Them stupid Chinese drum switches basically only come in a two or three horse rated version and then these idiots at the uh, import company go ahead and use that same switch even though it's not rated for the motor they're putting on matter of fact they're not rated for any motor they're garbage but so anyways i ordered a good dayton drum switch that's rated for the five horse that this thing is but we looked into getting this rewound it was 15 to 1600 dollars and a three week lead time and those not acceptable. So I've bought, I'll show you, we ordered up and bought a whole new motor. Now, I'd have preferred to have got it rewound because the rewound is better than, uh, yeah, you can see here, brand new spanking motor. Um, the rewound ones are actually better because this is another Chinese or whatever, Taiwan motor. Probably not Taiwan, they're actually pretty decent stuff. But anyways, Chinese motor, and they're pretty much junk. But customer wanted it back up and going so because of that i've got this motor i got to get this pulley and sleeve assembly off and these are a nightmare i don't know if you guys have ever fought with a bridgeport one they're bad enough where it's just a pulley and we it's always a ticklish business getting them off without cracking them you can see i was on it with big three jaw puller i put as much load on as i dare there's a fine lines this is cast iron you load them up too much and they'll split right around the hub but the problem is, with this one being a full contact sleeve, I couldn't get it to bud. So I heated it up, which once again, you don't dare get it too hot. Usually on a bridge port, that pops them loose. On this one, I heated it up with load on it and got it to go pop just once and move like a 32nd of an inch, and then it said no more. And I was under it with pry bars and hitting it with a dead blow. None of it was doing it. So I went destructive mode. Um, we've, we've got another one of these motors sitting there burned up. So if they decide they want to rewind whenever, we've got a whole other one to do that with. So first thing I did was dug out my air hammer and got on it with a pry bar and went and you can see if you look in there where I've beat up the end of the shaft. And it did pretty much exactly what I would expect it to. It walked it out. You can see... It's come out a good three quarters of an inch, but at the same time, it was peening the end of the shaft over, and it's got to the point now where it's wedging in there. But the good news is that walked it off far enough that now we're going to stick her in the saw, chop the shaft off, and then I can go stick this thing in the lathe and just bore what's left of the shaft out. So that's what we're up to.
One gaping hole through the middle. better attitude when they have a hole down the middle of them. Sure I felt it stop for a second there. I wanted to make sure I wasn't putting my pusher in a bind. This thing that I found is barely smaller than the uh, bore of that. I don't want to get it stuck in there and start a whole new problem. There she went. There it is. One shaft drilled on through and out of there. Now, that's interesting. This piece, that's what I kind of expected to find. This piece is actually a separate chunk. I, I knew it was. I just wasn't sure how far into this one it went. Honestly, I think this was the one that was being trouble. Anyways, we got her off there. I will uh, wipe this all down, get it on the new motor shaft, and then we're going to go put this sucker in and uh, get on to the next job. So it's pretty much what I expected. That is a slip fit. And this component is a bit of a, yeah, it's definitely a much snugger fit. I think I'm going to put a little anti-seize on that when I put it on. In the hopes that if I have to get it back off again, I actually can without having the kind of fight that I just encountered. So that's interesting. I got a nick inside of there. I'm going to have to get in there and hit that with a round file. I don't know if I did that with the, uh, you can just see it in there. Anyway, I'm going to go get that. Then we'll smack this on. Just gotta go put this thing back together.